Hello and welcome to an episode of Navigating Cancer. I'm Dr. Joey Bennett and I'm joined by Wendy Hall, our licensed clinical social worker at the Robert Boisino Oncology Institute. How are you? I'm very good. Good to yeah. see you. Good to see you as well. You have another great show. Well, thank We have a very good show lined up tonight and we have a, a special guest with us, Todd Sandlin. Many of you may recognize Todd if you've ever had a PET scan done at Pet CT Services of Florida up in Beverly Hills. Ted, uh, Todd is the nuclear medicine technologist that runs that machine along with Carol who's at the front desk and who else at the office? We have Mary Jane there. She works up front with Carol and then we have John, another technologist. He works in our Ocala office as well. Okay, so what we're gonna talk about today are imaging studies that we use in cancer and there are several different things that I want us to go into looking at. If we can go to the next slide, I'm going to show you a few of the things that we typically use a lot as far as imaging studies in cancer. First of all, there's the mammogram, the CT scan or the CAT scan, MRI scans, bone scans, and the big topic of today's show is the PET scan. Um, these are all tests that we use a lot in cancer depending upon the different type of cancer. And I'm going to kind of show you a few pictures of what these look like. Uh, the first slide is actually what a mammogram looks like, and this is a normal looking mammogram. The top part is looking at both breasts from above and the bottom part on your screen is looking at both of the breasts from the side. And so when radiologists look at these they want to see symmetry. They want to see things look about the same on both sides. If you show the next slide for me now, this is what an abnormal mammogram looks like and you can see that there is this very dense area that is just above the little white arrow that is showing there, that's very concerning as far as a mammogram goes. Um, another tool that we use an awful lot for helping to stage and screen and follow patients is the CT scan. Uh, and on the next image that we've got, this is a CT scan and it's a very unfortunate CT scan because the large white area that you see in the bottom left hand portion of the screen is actually a very large brain tumor. But you can see how these CT scans give you really nice coverage and very good pictures. We contrast that also with being able to use an MRI scan. And the next slide really shows you what an MRI looks like. This is a sideways view of someone's head and you can see their brain, you can see the nose, you can see their tongue and their spinal cord and if we'll come out and kind of show the whole screen I can give you an idea of the different things that we're looking at here as far as where the spinal cord comes down into the spinal canal. So another excellent tool that gives you a chance to see different things of the body. Um, next slide is a bone scan. Um, many of you may have had bone scans before and this is what a bone scan looks like. It is a bone scan because it only really looks at the bones and unfortunately this person has a lot of cancer throughout their body because all of the little dark spots for the most part that you see on this scan represent cancer. So this is another test that we can use and we get a really good idea of what the bones look like. The next generation though of scanning is what we want to spend a lot of time with tonight talking with Todd about and it's PET scans. Um, PET scans have brought us into a whole new generation of doing studies because when you look at an MRI, when you look at a CT scan, you can see a mass or you can see a lump, but sometimes it's hard to distinguish scar tissue from normal tissue, and that's where the PET scan kind of comes in. Give me a little bit of background as to what the PET scan actually does. You know, why is it that we can see these things? Well, the way I like to think about a PET scan is that it's the only scan that shows physiology and actually function and what's happening. With an MRI, a CT, an X-ray, even a uh, ultrasound, you're getting a very clear picture, but it is just a picture, whereas a, a PET scan shows us at a molecular level the uh, uptake and, and what the body's trying to do to give us a good clear picture in that way. And if we go to the next slide, we'll show you these are some PET images. And um, Steve, if we can come out and kind of let me just point at the screen a little bit here. Um, this is the heart, um, this bright yellow thing that shows here. And you can go back in now and show that on the screen. But that is the heart. And the heart burns a lot of sugar. It works very hard. So there are normal things that should show up on PET scans. But up above the heart, in the very center of the screen, you see a little white spot in someone's neck, and it's right up here. That's an enlarged lymph node, and that should not be there. Um, had we done just the CAT scan, and on this slide, you're seeing a couple of different things. Steve, if you can pull back out. 
This part is the CT scan. This part in the center is the PET scan. And this is a fusion of the two together. So when you come in, you get to see structures on the left-hand side, activity in the middle, and then you fuse the two together on the outside. And the beauty of us being able to do this is that if you have a lymph node somewhere in your body, or a mass that's right. growing in the body, and you do just the CAT scan over here, yes, you can see it, but we can't tell if that thing is alive or not. What I like to tell my patients is, if you remember the old uh, light bright kits that children had a long time right. ago, it, if you just have a picture, you just have a picture, and that's what a CT would be. And if you have a good radiologist, he can differentiate and he can, he can find a mass. But with PET scan gives you a bright peg. It says, look here, this is where there's a problem at. And it shows us bright and says, this is an area of increased uptake. This is a tumor that's trying to reproduce uh, too fast. And look right, right here. And I mean, so I when, think of it. when you have the PET scans, and we'll talk about this a little bit more in the next segment, you're being injected with a radioactive glucose, glucose. sugar solution. Um, our bodies live off of sugar. We have to have glucose or sugar to metabolize for our cells to run and things of that nature. And I've had people before say, I'm going to go on a low sugar diet. Uh, that doesn't help. Um, our body, unless you're a diabetic, tends to regulate sugar very well anyway. Right. You cannot make your sugar go down so far that a cancer would respond or die from a lack of sugar. So you're getting injected with this agent and normal cells in our body, even though they divide and reproduce to replace dead and aging cells, Cancer cells grow uncontrollably. They just keep multiplying, they keep going, um, and they burn up an awful lot of sugar. And so when you see these hot spots that we're talking about and what Todd called the uh, bright little peg in there, uh, that's a lot of sugar being burned up in that area, and it keys the radiologist off to, to tell us that something's going on. And, and the radiologist is another critical part of this test. It really takes some experience to know how to read these Right, things. because like you said before, there are certain areas of the body that are going to metabolize the sugar on a normal basis. We always expect the brain, the heart, the uh, bladder where the, the glucose is excreted, and sometimes the kidneys to show bright on every scan. It's when we see areas of other uptake that we are, we're alarmed. And I think that that just goes into some experience with reading these Absolutely. studies. I mean, PET technology is still relatively new. Um, when it first came out, it was used for only a few types of cancers, and, and we've now really expanded well, the scope what, of what we use it What's made it so much better is the CT overlay over the PET because it gives us the clear definition, the 3D uh, rendering, and you're not just looking at a, uh, this is a pet here in the middle. It looks a little bit uh, blurry, mm -hmm. but when you have the CT with the pet, it gives definition as well as, as the uptake. Good. Uh, we'll be back in just a minute with the next segment, and we're going to actually kind of walk you through a PET scan.